Thanks for joining us, Noah. So this doesn't affect a, an indigenous person from getting into law school. It, this is affecting their ability to work in the field once they're done school. Is that right? Uh, yes, it, it potentially could affect somebody even before they've started law school, because if you know that this extremely invasive process is ahead of you, and if you've had some kind of run in with police because your community is over policed or faces systemic racism within a system, if you've, if you've ever faced charged, even if you were acquitted of them, or even if they dropped the charges, you have to expose and reveal all those sides. And, and you don't necessarily know what the ultimate outcome will be. So there are people who may never go into the legal profession who might have made a wonderful and valuable contribution. And then people who have started don't quite know what the outcome will be, other than the fact that they're going to face this extremely intrusive uh, questioning process. Yeah. You know, and so it's not Indigenous law students that are leading this charge. It, it, it is the CCLA, uh, because even raising this issue could torpedo careers before they get started. Is that the gist of it? That's right. I mean, I think you would be potentially seen as a troublemaker for raising it in a, in a profession that doesn't necessarily uh, want to see that. Or maybe, you uh, you know, there was one student who approached us um, who, you know, who may have had their own uh, history that they didn't want to expose and be exposed about, mm -hmm. and and none of which should be re related or relevant to the practice of law. So they approached CCLA, they brought it to our attention. It's uh, an issue that has been on the national agenda for a long time. Mm -hmm. The Canadian Civil Liberties Association is a national organization that is concerned about truth and reconciliation, diversity, inclusion, equality. And so it was uh, clear and obvious to us that we needed to get involved. And, um, and we've also done some of our work in collaboration with the Indigenous Bar Association. You know, you said this flies in the face of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission calls to action. You know, what's been the response from law societies when you've raised the issue? We haven't yet heard anything back from the Manitoba Law Society. I hope that they do send their response soon. I know that they've responded to other people. We'd like to hear from them, too, because this needs to be taken care of straight away. Um, and but but we do know that there was a, a um, initiative on the part of the Federation of Law Societies in Canada to try and change the admission process and look again and review the good character process. And there wasn't sufficient interest on the part of the different law societies in Canada. And so they had to put that aside. We also know that there was an initiative in the Law Society of Ontario to make changes in the spirit of truth and recon reconciliation. And in fact, they did remove some of the most obvious and egregious questions that were being asked at the time in Ontario and that are still being asked in Manitoba and in some of the other provinces. Is it, is it mostly the Prairie provinces? Is it, am I understanding that correctly? It's the you know, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Alberta? It, it, these are not the only provinces that have a good character requirement or that ask invasive questions. These are the ones where the initiative has started, and these are the ones that are focused at the moment on truth and reconciliation, diversity, and inclusion. And uh, so because we were approached by students in Manitoba, and that, that's where we decided to start. Mm -hmm. But there are other provinces that need to look very carefully at what their requirements are. Certainly the questioning and the invasiveness of the questioning and the fact that it's going to have a disproportionate impact on Indigenous and other racialized and marginalized, marginalized communities in Alberta and Saskatchewan is very apparent when you look at that. And that's why the Indigenous Bar Association began its initiative in Alberta uh, and Saskatchewan. Well, thank you for taking the time to clarify this for us. Hopefully it gets remedied sooner rather than later. Certainly hope so. And we're going to do everything that we can to make sure that the law societies look at it seriously. And we've had some very wonderful responses from lawyers across the country who feel as strongly as we do that this is not the way forward for the legal profession. Thanks for this, Noah.